Welcome back, everybody, and we're going to continue on in the Book of Romans, doing an expository teaching to go through verse by verse, so to speak, to make sure that we understand what the Bible is saying. What What is God meaning in his word instead of just picking and choosing what we read and what we understand? We want to make sure that we understand the entire word of God. And so previously we began in Romans chapter 2, and uh, we're going to continue on. We went up to verse 3 before, and now we're going to look at verse 4. So let's go ahead and read that. So it says, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness or and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath, and revelation of right, of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patient, continuous, and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that doeth, that worketh good to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. Notice previously we talked about that, about God not being a respecter of persons. It doesn't matter of your lineage. If you're a Jew or you're a Gentile, it doesn't matter with God. God is more important or more focused on you individually. So you could be the child of Marilyn Manson or, you know, the fourth generation or the sixth generation or the 1200th generation. Not that there have been that many. Uh, and, and all of you are witches or into occultism and all that sort of stuff. That doesn't stop you from God's grace. You can receive God's grace just the same as the person who has been a... Uh, a 14th generation pastor's child you know everybody has been in church and everything like that they need God's grace as well and they need to be saved just like you so with God it is there is no respect of persons and he doesn't care one bit about your lineage your lineage will not keep you out of heaven and it will not send you or it will not get you into heaven we all need Jesus so let's go ahead and take this into consideration here. So previously in verse 3 it says, Do you think, O man, that judges, O man, that judges them that which do such things and do us the same, that you can escape the judgment of God? Do you think that you who judge somebody for doing the exact same thing that you do, that God is not going to see that? You're not going to escape the judgment of God. In verse 4 it says, Or despiseth thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? This is twofold right here. This you have to consider that a lot of times when you when somebody judges somebody, you know, let, let's just take the uh, homosexual community. A lot of Christians, or I should say a lot of churchgoers, like to really bear down against them and say all sorts of manner of wickedness against them. And they say, well, you know what? God just needs to wipe them off the face of the planet or God just needs to give them whatever, you know, whatever they go through, they completely deserve. They're just really judge judging and harsh against people like that. And then they fail to look inside to see what that they they do a lot of the same stuff okay and this verse right here is first of all saying do you despise the kindness of god the riches of god's goodness and forbearance this forbearance basically is saying you know patience as well as long suffering is patience it's it's saying that god is patient toward those people that you are so much wanting judgment and wrath to be poured out on them and he says that those the goodness of god leads to repentance and so toward those that you're so harsh against 
Why do you hate the fact that God is giving them the breath that they live? God is being patient with them, trying to get them to repent. But notice it says, leadeth thee to repentance. It doesn't say, leadeth them to repentance. But it says, leadeth thee to repentance. So it's talking to the person who is behaving hypocritically. And it's reminding them just, I mean, do you think that you're escaping the judgment of God just because God is not, has not sent you to hell right then and there? Has not, you know, lightning has not stricken you down and all these things. And you're putting on a good show for other people. But God knows, okay? So do you think that just because God is being kind and good to you to give you a chance to repent from your hypocrisy, do you think that you're going to escape the judgment of God if you do not repent? So you cannot judge whether somebody is doing right or wrong just because of God's goodness toward them. You know, there are other verses that talk about that, that God, the, that God sends his rain on the just and on the unjust. He shines his sun on the just and on the unjust. And so you cannot judge outward judgment for anything. You can't, you know, there are scriptures that talk about that as well. And so that's what this is saying that, you know what? Hey, God is good to people for the, not because they, the people are good. And he's not bad to people because those people are bad and all that stuff. No, that was a common misconception that a lot of the Jews believed. And even Jesus had to explain to him that, you know, do you think that these people had this tower fall on them simply because they were bigger sinners than these other people? No, that's not the truth. Or do you think that this man is blind because he or his parents sinned? No, that's not true. That's not how it works with God. God is a respecter of no persons. He doesn't respect, I mean, he does not sit there and say, oh, you're, you, you know, you're, you're rich, you're good. You, you're poor, eh, you're, you're more of a liability than an asset to me. So therefore, I'm going to pick the person who is an asset to me. And you who's a liability, you go away. God doesn't do that. People do that, and it's unrighteous to do that sort of stuff. The goodness of God is to lead us to repentance. And so if God is being good to you, we ought to be repenting of anything that we know is in our heart. Don't think that just because God has not stricken the hammer down, and you know, bang the gavel on the, the, the bench or anything like that on us, that he doesn't see it. And, or he doesn't think that it's wrong. No. He sees and he's giving you a chance to repent. In verse 5, it warns us. It says, But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. So in these two verses right here, we see that, you know what, hey, the longer that you refuse to repent, you're building up more and more wrath against yourself, basically, that will be poured out on the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. On Judgment Day, all that unrepentance, that's what this word impenitent means. It basically is saying unrepentant heart. Because you are refusing to repent, even after God has been so good to you, try, try, just giving you a chance to repent of your hypocrisy. Remember, we're talking about hypocrisy here. The longer that you choose to repent or to, to not repent and you choose to continue to be a hypocrite, you are building wrath up against yourself. Now, in these notes right here, let's uh, take a look at those notes again. So in verses, verse 4, the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. There's a good song about that. You should look that one up. But it, we got to remind ourselves that God is patient and long-suffering. And in 2 Peter 3, 9, it goes ahead and it says that. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And what that's talking that this verse right here is talking referring to is that some people will say, well, everybody's been saying that Jesus is going to come back for generations and everything like that. God, 
God has slacked off. He's he's not he's not going to come back or anything. No, right there in 2 Peter 3, 9, it's talking about God has been patient and he's giving all of humanity. I, I tell people, especially his church, to repent. They're giving, he's giving everybody a chance to repent because he doesn't want anyone to end up in hell. So unfortunately, people will end up in hell in the lake of fire, but that's because of their own choice. It's not because God has not done everything that he can possible to help them out, to, to give them that chance to repent. In verse 5, unrepentance builds up more and more wrath for the day of judgment. Okay. And also I have right here the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. That Those ver words right there explain that the day of judgment is not going to be a hidden day. Exposure will happen. So anybody who is <clears throat> behaving hypocritically, judging other people, saying, hey, you need to stop doing that, whereas you or they themselves do it, and they think they're getting away with it because they act holier than them, they carry a big Bible, they wear a fancy suit, they go to church every, every time that the doors are open, they have that hidden sin in their heart that they refuse to repent of, guess what? Exposure will happen. <clears throat> So we need to realize that day of judgment is not going to be a hidden thing. In Luke 12, 1 through 3 says, In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that one <coughs> that they trod upon another they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Notice that, you know, hey, these things are connected. You know, we're talking about a hypocrisy here in this verse. And we're also talking about hypocrisy in Luke 12, 1 through 3. So he's telling them, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. And in verse 2, it says, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in, in the closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. So you better be careful sitting there telling people, oh yeah, uh, we need to be loving toward this person. And then you turn around and you backbite them. Or you tell them to their face, hey, I love you. And then you turn around and you destroy their character behind, you know, in where you think nobody is watching or hearing. Everything will be exposed. The day of judgment, that will be exposed. Okay, so let's continue on. In verse 6, who will render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patient continuous continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. So, those who in patient continuance in other words if you've heard the phrase don't be, become weary in well doing this is kind of like pointing to that okay this that's another verse in the bible that talks about that don't become weary in well doing and so those of us who are following the lord we need to patiently continue in well doing okay in in, in doing the righteousness the righteous will of god okay we're going to have that eternal life <clears throat> but in verse 8 it says but unto them that are contentious in other words they always want to argue they always want to fight they always want to sit there and say something negative and everything like that i had to talk to a, a brother who i who was like that recently as well but there's a lot of people like that who are very contentious, especially in these days of social media where the very spirit of social media is very contentious. <laughs> I mean, you just look down at the comments in uh, YouTube videos. If, you know, if there are a lot of comments on this one, I can guarantee you that there's a, there's a good chance that there's going to be negative and contentious people who would say something. And they do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulations, and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. So it's saying that that's what they get, whereas we get eternal life, they get indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish. 
And it goes ahead and it says, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. So your lineage does not give you free reign to behave however you want. Even if you are a pastor's kid, you have to be saved. You have to come to the Lord. You have to, you know, you have to be led by the Holy Spirit as well, just like everybody else. Just like those who have never been to church in their entire lives. And it continues in verse 10, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentiles. All right. And it ends right here in with, for there is no respect of persons with God. Once again, each of us will be judged by our actions. We can't blame our parents. We can't blame our lineage. We can't blame, well, you know, I've just... I just come from a long line of liars and, and a long line of prostitutes. I mean, it's in my blood. It's just part of who I am. Nope, does not work like that. Okay? You are responsible for your own actions. And God will render to every man according to his own deeds. Okay? Or hers. Okay? This is not just talking about men. Okay? We can't say they made me do it. Like a lot of people do. And you can't even say, oh, the devil made me do it. No, I'm sorry, but you made your choice. Okay? Ezekiel 18.20 goes ahead and says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. In other words, each person is going to have to account for their own actions. Your parents can't account for the children, for you, your deeds, and you can't account for your parents' deeds. We need to make sure that we remember that, especially if we are behaving hypo hypocritically. All right? So let's keep that in mind that, you know what? Hey, with God, there's no respecter of persons with God. If you have a long line of Christian parents grandparents great 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 parent grandparents all that sort of stuff you still need to have a personal relationship with the lord so don't get on all haughty and have an attitude of you know hey i'm i'm okay i'm good and uh, conversely if you come from a long line of backbiters of of just horrible people and people who are deep into the occult and and all sorts of wickedness you are not outside of salvation you can be saved too you need and you need to come to the lord just the same and the lord's not going to sit there and say well you know what i'm going to save this person over here but you no nah, no nah, you're you're too deep you're too far gone he he can't, he would never say such a thing because that would say, basically, you know what? He's not strong enough to save somebody who is that deep in the pit. And trust me, he can save the deepest of us all. Okay? So let's just keep that in mind. There's no respecter of persons. No respect of persons. Hopefully all of this made sense. We covered quite a few verses here. so, But a lot of them... The meaning, same thing. It's just going through a list of different things, and uh, and it's just talking about, you know what, hey, each one of us is going to take account of our own actions, whether you have them hidden or whether they are exposed right now, they will all be exposed in the end. Okay? So, I appreciate you, and uh, thank you also for your prayers, and uh, continue, continuing to watch and follow along. And uh, please, yeah, definitely share below the video. Share uh, also in the comments how you put, how you can apply this to your life. Because knowing or having a knowledge about the uh, the Bible is not nearly as important as actually applying what you know about the Bible. Okay, that's where wisdom comes into play, and that's where you be you move from just a hearer of the word. Somebody who just hears it and then he never does it. You're moving from a hearer only to a doer of the word. And the doers of the word are the ones who, well, basically they are the ones who please God. All right. So 
I will talk and I will see you again soon and we will continue on in the chapter. God bless you mightily and greatly and you have a great day. Bye bye.